Now let's see if we got anything. Oh my gosh! Look at that! It fired right off! I wanted to show y'all something that I didn't the other day. I told you um, that I, um, I sanded the points or filed the points and uh, I didn't show you that, how I did that. And some of y'all might not be familiar with what points are. Some of you might be because you grew up in that generation. But I know a lot of people my age don't. And I can talk about it, but I think it's better to show you, especially because this is YouTube. A lot of people look stuff up to find out how to do things. I, it's not very helpful if I just told them I did this and don't show anything. So I'm going to do, do a little video of just what I did to um, get this thing to have spark again and what later made it run so let me show you real quick i'm just going to turn the camera around okay so what i did is i have to bring the console up um this would have been easier if i had done it before i put the console back down but you know you live and you learn so right here this is the distributor and inside this houses the points so to get to that got up oh, oh man gotta pop these tabs off the sides it's really not that hard that was just not the best way to get to it so then you move this out of the way and you see that little thing right there that those are the points see what it does is it opens and closes and that when it when it opens it's either when it opens or when it closes I'm not entirely sure y'all tell me um, I can't remember right now but either when it opens or closes it it sends the current into the rotor cap and that sends the spark through the wires into the spark plug in the engine which fires the cylinder so sometimes these build up corrosion um, and so that there's no conductivity between the points and so what you can do and what I did was I didn't have any really nice sandpaper but I got this that's made for to go on a drill you can see it's I mean it's thick stuff but I just knew it probably had some uh, corrosion built up on there so I just took and I opened them up and I slid this in between, just did a little ch -ch 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 action, closed it back up, and I put the cap back on, and I put the, secured it in place. Well, this is really hard to do with one hand. Now I see why all those guys I watch videos of, like, get things that they can mount their, their camera with. Because this is... I mean, it's, it's tough. There we go. Okay. I hope y'all saw all that. I don't know if I'm holding the camera very good. I'm looking at this while... There we go. Okay. So it is back in place. And then after that, I fired it up, and that's when it started running. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So that's all it took. I mean, literally, it was just that simple. And then everything else followed, which you'll be seeing in this in the rest of this video. So... Thank you so much for watching. I'm really enjoying doing this and it's making my mother-in-law really happy because, you know, she misses her dad, but she has a lot of memories with him in this thing. And so I'm hoping to keep it on the road, or first get it back on the road officially and then keep it on the road for the foreseeable future. So thanks guys. All right. So I went out and I got a brand new battery and as you would know, it was the cheapest one I could get. So, um, the plan is now to try and get it running, and I'm going to see if it'll pull fuel. I'm, the fuel tank has a leak in it, so right now I'm not pulling from that. I've got a, a jerry can in the cab, so, you know, all the safety. Um, but we're going to see if it'll pull fuel with the fuel pump, because it's just a mechanical fuel pump on the side of the block. And we're going to see if it'll pull fuel, fuel from there and run. So I'm sure it's going to start, but we're going to see how long it's going to run and see if it'll actually be pulling fuel into the carburetor. So... Here goes nothing. Can't forget the gas can is. Get some in the car. Uh
Alright, so I'm thinking the needle and seat might be stuck. So I'm going to do some adjustificating and see if we can't get it to let the fuel flow. Because as you can see it's starting up just fine. It's just, it's not wanting to keep running. So it's obviously not getting fuel from the jerry can. But let's see what we got. Justify. Well, the good thing is I see no leaks, but I can't seem to get the needle and seat to open up and let it come in there. I mean, I've just been banging it with a hammer. So. Alright, we're going to try and see if the fuel pump's even pumping. I'm going to take you in there and we're going to take the fuel line off of the, the carburetor. And we're going to see if it's getting anything to it. Alright, so there's the fuel line. We're going to start her up and see if we've got any fuel pumpage. <laughs> absolutely nothing so I think we got a bad fuel pump on our hands and so I think that'll be the next thing we have to do I don't know of any way I mean that's my best way of testing it. if it was pushing fuel of course it could be that my jerry can setup is not conducive to it because it's having to pull fuel up instead of um, what it's supposed to be doing and be gravity fed so that could be part of it um i'm really not sure so let me see if i can't fix that so i did just have another idea i figured if the fuel pump's working it may not and it's not drawing fuel from the tank here it should at least be pushing air through this so i'm gonna put my thumb over this and see if it's pushing any air while the engine's running let's see no, we got nothing at all. So, I'm thinking it's a bad fuel pump. Probably going to go order one of those. I doubt that they have it in stock, but we'll go see. I mean, everything else is good. It just needs, I guess it needs just a fuel pump. Maybe the needle and seat are fine. I mean, I... I hammered it enough. I mean, you see, I've got two different hammers. Got the floor and hammer, the framer and hammer. And it may have had some encouragement on there. But, yeah. So we're going to get a fuel pump. And we'll be back. So in case y'all are wondering, that is how I get to the... Oh, dang it. Good lighting. Lighting. There we go. That is the bolt for the fuel pump. And then there's another one. Oh, yeah, right there. So that is what I have to take off. And you know, the engine's just so conveniently placed here in the cabin. Oh, focus, focus, there we go. But it's still kind of tight in here, even though it's just a six cylinder. Funny how that works, but we got this. We're gonna get it off and we're gonna get a new one on. All right, so as you guys can see, we have a new fuel pump installed. It should be the right one. It just doesn't have the, the strainer on top or the filter on top, whatever it is. I've done this in my F-350 with this 300 straight six and it's worked fine. So it's got a filter right in front of the carb anyway. So, um, but we've got it on and it should work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to crank it over and see if it'll pull fuel from the tank and squirt it out of here. If so, it might be pretty um, nasty pretty quick. That's what the hope is, but we're going to see if we can't get it pulling fuel and idling for more than 5-10 seconds at a time. So, here goes nothing. 
Y'all know the drill? Gotta drizzle it. Give it a little bit of fuel. Sorry, I'm missing the camera. Way too much. Perfect. Alright, let's see what we got. Oh, yep. Dang right. Man, that was a lot of fuel. <laughs> All right, well, let's plug that in and see if we can't get it to idle for a long, longer period. So that was awesome. We definitely have a functioning fuel pump now. So what I've done is I've taken and I've replaced this line because that one was dry rotted and looked like it had about a thousand holes in it. And this one just looked like it was leaking at the carburetor because I didn't have that uh, fastener tightened. So we're going to see if I can get it to pump and stay running and not leak. So here it goes. Cross your fingers. Okay, so it's leaking at my fitting that I put on, but not a ton. Okay, it's leaking a good bit, but we have fuel going into the fuel making happener and it's staying at idle. So we have to fix this leak, but check this out. Sounds like we have no accelerator pump because it's like, it wants to die when I give it to it, but let's see if it'll rev up. There it is. Yeah, she's definitely gonna need a rebuild. But man, listen to that thing. Uh, it's leaking a little bit, I'll fix that. But I mean, listen to that thing just purring away. Let's check, check the exhaust out. Man. Look at that, not even smoking. Got a little bit of, you know, just some leakage. I'm sure that's just water or fuel that was in there from a long time ago, who knows. But, man, listen to that thing idle. That's pretty freaking cool. It's running under its own power, just Taken away. So next is gonna be fixing that leak, getting this tire changed, and um, I gotta repair, there's a hole in the fuel tank. Let me show you. Also, I did get a new fuel cap for it. This was the locking one. I encouraged it off of there a little bit. But this is my leaking fuel tank. It's got a hole. got a hole you can see it it's right there oh look it's leaking right there but we're gonna see if we can repair that instead of replace it because I mean it honestly doesn't look like it's in that bad of shape so we're gonna see if we can't just repair that and run like it is but man I'm excited all right let's see if that fixed the leak oh man with the flashlight on you're getting all the dust bunnies flying around don't don't be concerned with that. Just let's see if it leaks. Nothing. Looks like there might be a little bit on the carburetor there, but that almost that also mo might be from me spraying it down the throat and whatnot. But I mean, it's not dripping. It's not dripping there. I mean, it's just purring away. Look, we even have oil pressure. Can you believe that? And volts or amps. 
Got no fuel. Funny how that is. But leaks fixed. It's running. Good deal. All right, next up is the fuel tank. All right, so we're about to lower it down onto the ground. We've got the spare loaded. So it's actually got air in it. It was the one in the in the van. So that's what we're going to roll on to get all new tires on this. And I checked the brakes. Sorry, I didn't include it, but I checked the brake cylinder in here. It's a drum brake, but didn't look like there was any signs of any leaks or anything. So I think it's good to go. And if the, the other ones look the same, I'm going to check the fronts because I do definitely want to be sure the fronts work. Because right now the brake pedal goes whoosh, 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 nothing there. So we're going to see what we can do up front. But for now, we're just going to drop this down onto the ground and see if she holds. Here we go. Just like that, sitting on its, own, on its own four feet. All right, now on to the next thing. So, yesterday evening it was too dark to shoot, so I didn't worry about that. But I did this, so there was a leak in the tank. I showed y'all, and it was right there in the middle, and you can see I've repaired it. Or what we hope is a permanent repair. So what I did is I put a self-tapping screw with a rubber washer um, in the hole. And then I put this um, fuel tank sealant on it with fiberglass mesh. And we're hoping that's going to hold. It seems like it's really solid right now. So we'll see how that goes. But if that's the case, that's going to be the permanent fix there. Because why would I buy a new tank when it looks... I mean, it's got some surface rust on it but it really doesn't look too bad so let me know if y'all think i'm crazy but i say it's good as it is all right so i figured i'd film this i know this is probably a weird angle but got you in ultra wide that way you can maybe see what i'm doing so right now i'm working on taking the front wheel off so i can get the front brake because right now it's definitely dragging I mean, hopefully driving will just wear that off, but I want to check the brakes just to be sure because, I mean, better be safe, you know. So, here we go. Got one lug off already. Working on some others. Honestly, I've never used a four-way before, but... This is the way to do it. So Uncle Tony says this is the best way to, you know, get stuff off. You just got to use your body as a hammer. Future arthritis be damned. Also, I use my hands all the time anyway, so I'm either going to get arthritis or my body's adapted and I'm going to be fine either way. Also, this wrist has been totally reconstructed, so it's definitely getting arthritis. So I'm just going to have to live. So, so be it. You gotta make sure before you spin it, you get your hand out of the way. Otherwise, big old whack. It happened a minute ago. That's why I'm saying it. All right. There's that. Looky there. Good old 1974 technology at its finest. Oh yeah. Good and snug on there. Just what we want. 
Let me go get the encourager. Yeah, that thing doesn't want to move at all. I mean, it moved. Well, it appears to me that the drum is held on by the wheel bearing. Because the studs coming out look like they're part of the drum itself. So. We're going to see what we need to do about that. I think we might just try and drive it as is, seeing as it's got air in all the tires. And if it's dragging that bad, it's going to stop itself. But it also might work itself free. I got fluid in the brake reservoir. You know, sometimes the car just needs to be moved for everything to start working just magically. Right? We'll see. Okay. Besides, I think it's way too early to do brakes on it anyway. You gotta make sure it'll run and drive, you know, and turn and stuff. You only need brakes if you want to stop. I just want this thing to go. It's the same thing when you're tightening. Especially because this one's free. When it gets to where it's tight, give it a few whacks. So that's the equivalent to some ooga doogas on an air wrench. Then you always got to be sure to do this if you're a guy. Girls don't have to worry about this, but it's not going anywhere. All right. I'm going to move my truck out of the way. We're going to get her started and idling. I'm going to see if I can't drive it out of here. To start, I think I'm just going to pull it forward and pull it back. We're going to see how that goes, and then we'll move on from there. Just now to drop it down. Helps if you use the right end of the thing. I think that lowered it slowly enough. Previously gotten it running its under its own power. Let's see if we can get it moving under its own power. Here it goes.
you can see it's definitely moving under its own power. Man, it's it's hard, especially in reverse. It doesn't like going in reverse. Forward wasn't too bad. Backing it up, I have to give it a good bit of gas. It's still warming up. Doesn't really like being driven. It's cold, I guess. But we're gonna get it going good. It's gonna happen. So. And you can hear it, it's running. Just like a champ. I feel like I'm smelling something burning. Let me open the hood, see if I see anything in there. See anything on fire, anything burning? Maybe it's just the brakes. Couldn't be getting hot that soon. I think one of the next things I need to do is I need to go ahead and change the oil because with that fuel pump having been bad, there may be a lot of fuel in the oil, and that is definitely not gonna be the best for the engine. So I think I think that's gonna be the next thing. Ooh, we definitely have an exhaust leak. That's what the smell is. It's either that or some blow-by. Yeah, I think what it is. So you see it's coming from down there under the car? That's just it's leaking from the exhaust. No big deal. I'm sure that'll go away. We don't have to worry about that. Alright. Well, I'm pleased with this so far. I think, like I said, I'm going to put a... I'm going to go get a change of oil for it. We're going to change the oil. And then I'm going to see if I can't drive it somewhere. Probably not too far because of how the brakes are, but we'll see. Alright. Thanks, y'all. All right, so I've got the console back in. I've got the fuel line pump plumbed in from the rear. It is not running like it was. So it makes me think there's something wrong in the plumbing. There's either a restriction or something, but if I rev it up, It does okay, but it sounds like we might have lost a cylinder. Doing that, it's fine. The exhaust is even cleared up a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. We'll check that out in a little bit. But you hear it? Yeah. All right, let's see if we can't just get around the neighborhood a little bit. I have very little brakes, but I have some. But I don't like how hard it is to make it go, so I think we're just gonna put it back in its spot. Mm. 
Wow, the temp's actually coming up. Check that out. I'm getting some temp in her. Well, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this out and I'm just gonna drive it back and forth a few times. See if I can't get them brakes loose. I'll let you watch me. But yeah, we got black smoke coming out the back. I don't I don't like that. We're gonna have to do something about that. I mean Yeah, and it smells like oil. That's not good. We'll figure something out there. Um, but. around the yard um, only just uh, it really got hung up back there it turns great we have like this much brakes this much um, but it, it turns good uh, yeah I think we're losing cylinders so it's either um, I feel like it has to do something with the the fuel because what coming in must just be like old gas and it is just not liking it whatsoever or there was something in those lines and that's getting into the engine and that's not making it happy at all so um, probably just gonna have to uh, I don't know I thought it would work itself out um, but I'm gonna have to get clean fuel to it because I mean it was running fine before I ran it through the tank so probably might have to do external tank for a little bit and i'm willing to bet that probably killed some plugs because um, it sounds like we lost some cylinders like i said so uh might have to change the plugs out which is kind of a given anyway because it's been sitting for so long and it's just old so. okay 
So we are back with the old E100 Super Van. Um, today the goal is going to be to drive it around a few times. Um, I've already driven it a few times already and I realized that that brake was seized up a little bit. But I've done a few really hard brake stands to try and get it some juice flowing and to get all the crap that's hung in there out. Because it is, I looked it up and apparently it's a pressed on uh, hub and um, drum and so to get it off would be just a ton of work so I'm just trying to get what we have going and I'll show you in a minute but I have freed it up quite a bit and the brakes there's pressure um, so it'll stop which is good we like being able to stop um, that's just that much closer to getting it on the actual road not just around the neighborhood road um, the other thing I've done is uh, I have plumbed in the rear fuel tank and I put a new carburetor on it. Um, the old carburetor, uh, it ran great when I first started it up and that was cool, but that was on fresh fuel. And when I ran from the tank the first time, I didn't put an extra filter in and it started running like absolute crap. And that just, I didn't like that. I had a spare carburetor from my truck here. It wasn't one that wasn't running. I just swapped it out for a different one that had a better uh, choke circuit on it. Uh, because it ran off vacuum and I like that um, and I put it on here fired right up now I have an accelerator pump which is great because now I can probably start it without having to prime it so that makes me be able to keep the console on it so that way um, that was good also in the the video I had of it running yesterday when it was running so bad and it was running um, it was definitely down on cylinders you could see black smoke coming out I'm pretty sure I figured out what the deal with that was when I changed the oil it's got a, a tube that I'm guessing is part of the PCV or something that goes down and into the exhaust. And I think what happened is when I was filling the, the oil, I should have taken that tube out of the exhaust and ran it straight up. But because I didn't, I think some oil just went straight, new oil, down into the exhaust. And that's why I was getting black smoke is because it was just burning off. Because after I changed the carburetor, well... For a little bit there was a little bit of black smoke but after about two minutes it was all gone engine was running fine i was able to go through all the gears and it was running smooth like it's really nice so we'll we'll take you for a ride again i know i took you for a ride um before but we're on power and we're going to take it for a spin so here goes nothing doesn't really like reverse but Bon voyage. I don't like going through the neighbor's yard, but <laughs> make all manual steering, so fortunately it's like this instead of like a normal car. <laughs> Some brakes, they're manual as well, so <laughs> they're a little wide there. Sorry, <laughs> um, they're manual brakes, so you really gotta push. <laughs> it looks like an interesting character. There we go. We're gonna make this one without being too wide. Okay, we were still a little wide. Not bad. And then when I had the other carburetor on here, it was like all I could do to get it to go. It was like, yeah. And then I was in first gear and it was, it was not like, but this one, this is actually one I've used on my truck and I got a new one since. It's doing really well. Like 
keep me at low speed like this. It'll still pull me. I think the next thing I gotta do is pull me. Yeah, what do you think is making it pull right like that? Yeah, it's gotta be that brake is like seized because, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's not super hard for me to hold, but as soon as I let go. Yeah, you're going. Go that way. Yeah, you're going right. Push the brakes for it to stop, but it stops. I don't want to make it. See, so yeah, now I'm in first, but it's pulling smooth. With the other carburetor on, it was like jumping, jumping, jumping just to get going. Yeah. But see, it'll even go real slow and smooth like this. Yeah. And look, brakes. We can stop. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. See if we can't get that brake just a little more unseized so this thing will be ready to go get all new shoes all the way around and, um, and really clean it up. So right now we're going to clean it up and just get ready to go on a little, little trip just one more time. But first I want to I show you how much freer the wheels are. So this is the one that's been giving me problems and check this out. Like before, I had to like, like it was so much work to do that. I mean, you can see it's still stopping, but it rolls pretty good. And so as a comparison, so that one goes like this. And this one is the driver's side. It drags a little bit, but not near as much. And it just rolls, and rolls. So it has a sticky spot too, but... It goes really well. But as far as I can tell, I mean, the brakes seem to be in decent shape. I mean, I know there's surface rust and whatnot in here, but they seem to work. It's just, it's all manual. So that's just, that's one of the things I like about this vehicle is One of the things I like about this vehicle is basically it's all manual. Um, it doesn't have power steering, it's manual steering. Uh, manual brakes, it's a, it's a manual, like, it's not a hydraulic clutch, it's just directly linked to the, to the transmission. That's why in some of the videos you've probably heard when I press the clutch down, it's like, because it's, it's all just linked. Um, it does have a heater. Uh, um, so far, it seems like it's not overheating. I could probably put a little bit more cooling in here, but as far as I'm, I'm just gonna go with it as is right now because it's not giving me any problems. And of course, it's getting cooler out, so that helps. Um, so that happened. The, the hanger doesn't have the best rip. So. got to be a little more gentle. Um, it's all metal, so that'll be fine. But yeah, now we're just going to we're gonna clean this off a little bit, and I'm going to ride around a few more times. So we're going to set the truck, set the van. Sorry, keep calling it a truck. It's on a truck chassis, so, you know. But yeah, we're going to set it back down. We're going to clean it up, and we're going to go for a few, few loops. I'll take you for a ride. That was gentle. Yesterday I dropped it down and it came down right now. I've got a jack stand under this and we'll see. I'll crank it up and then we'll see if we can't get out from under there. Pretty sure this jack Just from your neighbor, your neighborhood auto zone. I think we broke down on the side of the road one day, and my old boss bought it. And he told me afterwards, he's like, "Well, 
I'm not going to need it for anything else. If you want, you can have it. So I was like, well, I don't have a jack, so I'll take that home. And I did. So now I've got a jack. Well, I've actually got another jack. The other one's actually from where this came from. And so now I have two jacks. But I've only got one jack stand. So that might be another purchase down the road. I kind of like just coming by it. I don't really need them that often, but, you know. All right, let's see if I can get this one to come down as easy as the other side. Come on, babe. I'll take it. All right. Let's get this stuff out of the way. So, we're going to wet it down, and then we're going to wash it off. Just the right amount of floppage on the wiper down. You don't want too much, but you don't want too little. They got to know that it's old. That's just experience on the wiper. That's all that is. Experience is a good thing. I don't know about y'all, but I think these mirrors are really cool too. Let's go ahead, let's turn the water back on and I'll rinse it off. I know not everybody has access to like you know a shop or tools or whatnot um, but most of the stuff I watch on YouTube is just guys doing this like they'll go one of my favorite maybe y'all watch them too I don't know but it's Derek from Vice Grip Garage I mean he'll go he'll buy something sight up sight unseen and he goes and he does have usually somebody with him to help in case um, in case he gets to a spot where he just can't do anything but he'll go and he'll buy something that's been sitting for years and he'll get it running and drive it home. And it's just the coolest thing. But he's not like, hes not in a shop, he's just outside, he's working in the elements, just like with this, so I think that's pretty cool. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, you might not have these things lying around, but you might be interested in this kind of stuff. And it's stuff like that that it encouraged me, like, I like working with my hands, but I didn't know a whole lot about cars, but just watching those videos and then getting interested, I started looking up more and more and I'm like, I can do some of these things. Now, I probably am not going to make videos like him or like some of the other guys on YouTube. They're like pretty dang professionally done. But I can do this and I can enjoy doing it. And I can get an old van running and driving. And I'm going to be able to use it. And so that's cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to... We're going to see if it'll fire up on the first try. Because like I said, I got an accelerator pump now. So let's see how it does. You'll be able to see me now. So here we go. One, maybe two pumps. I think the choke needs adjustment.
idling away. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do work to the choke. Right now, I think it's just all the way open. I don't have it even to have it choke it at all. So I had to feather a little bit there. It's running. It's idling. You can probably hardly tell, but yeah, it's running. Um, let me bring you over here and show you. It's not smoking anymore. So, even with the cold, like, no smoke. No black, nothing. So. It's hiccuping a little bit, but it's because it's cold. So that's no surprise. But, yeah. Here goes nothing. We're about to go for a ride. So I've got you guys set up. I hope it's going to stay. We'll see. This thing's got a decent amount of body roll, so y'all might end up falling on the ground, but it's okay. I'll pick you back up, I promise. Mm -hmm. So, here we go. First gear, take off. It works if the parking brake is released. This thing has a dang good parking brake, and I'm thankful for that, because that thing right there, no, no emergency brake. Easy peasy take off. Oh, y'all are already done. All right, here we go. Let's fix this. All right, so here we go. Just going around the neighborhood. Nothing crazy. some backfiring that wasn't my favorite didn't do that yesterday maybe not push it so much right now it's still warming up but yeah brakes we got them But see, like when I let go of the steering wheel, watch this. Doop. Doop. Check out the back. I've got my eyes forward, I promise. Alright, so I know I lost you there for a second. It's still pulling to the right a little bit. So I'm not able. I'm not able to. Or I haven't been able to get that thing completely freed up, but um, and there's a lot of feedback in the steering, so like it's really shaky, and that might be because there's flat spots on the um, tires and whatnot. But so far, manual steering is fun. I swing wide like everywhere. Also, this is kind of like a cab over position. I mean, I'm right over the steering wheels. So, it's a little different driving action because you're right at the front of the vehicle. So, it's, I got to change my timing a little bit. Um, but, I mean, just listen to it. I mean, I can mat it a little bit. Let's see. Full throttle, you think? That was 40 miles an hour. This thing has some juice. That one ton I have sure isn't as fast as this. I mean, this is all in second gear too, so that's pretty crazy because I've got four speeds in that. And um, of course it's got a granny. So I guess third gear in that is about the same as this. But, oh shoot. All right. I think I'm gonna have to put y'all down again. I'm turning way too wide, one hand and manual steering. But y'all get the gist, I'm trying to get the, well dang, it's not really pulling to the right anymore. I mean a little bit, but 
it's getting better and better. I'm just gonna keep making laps, but I'll keep y'all updated. Right now we're on the road and driving, so that's all good. Thanks for watching, y'all. Talk at you. Well, here it sits. Just idling along after a little jaunt around the neighborhood. I mean, it's running smooth as you could think for an old 74 vehicle. I mean, I could see through the windows. It was just a good little ride. It's not going to Mexico anytime soon to do any drag racing, but um, it's definitely pulling that way. So it's either, it might even be an alignment thing, but I'm gonna jack it up and I'm gonna see if that wheel's not any more free. When I stand on the brakes, it's definitely still pulling to the driver's side. So, um, so it does have a brake issue, but it stops. And you know, just like with anything, you plan ahead. I mean, it's not gonna stop on a dime, so. I don't really want to be in traffic with it just yet because I don't want to have to stop on us all of a sudden. Um, never going to follow anybody close in this. It's not really fast enough to do it, but it's definitely got power in first and second gear and third gear is just a road gear. Like I shifted into it into the, in the neighborhood and I could put my foot to the floor and it, it didn't like it. So it doesn't like third gear at lower RPMs. It is meant to get up to like 35 plus in second and then go into third for the road. So, which makes sense. I mean, but, I mean, yeah, it did great. Everything held together, no doors flew open. <laughs> um, it's doing good. And it's still, it seems to have plenty of fuel to it. I think it just backfired earlier because it's just, it was cold. Um, might have to do a little more research, but think we're going to shut her down for now and I love it it's just right here on the on the dash but got the emergency brake on again I'm probably going to forget next time I go to start it and pull off and I'm going to be like well I had the emergency brake on again but um did great oh can't forget my sprite thanks for watching guys